Good morning, everybody. Today, our topic, which is closely related to the topic that we have been covering, chords and scales, is a musical technique called arpeggio. Now, arpeggio is something that originally came from classical music, but if you listen to hip-hop or rock or popular music, you'll find out that that technique has been borrowed and incorporated into most popular modern genres of music as well. I'm going to show it to you because it's a really fun and easy technique and one that can make your songs really come off as professional. Um, they just sound tight and cool. All right. Um, now, let's talk about a basic definition of what an arpeggio is. If we look it up on Wikipedia, uh, which of course is the uh, sum total of all human knowledge, uh, <clears throat> it says an arpeggio is a musical technique where notes in a chord are played or sung in sequence, one after the other, rather than ringing out simultaneously. Okay, so let's say that one more time. An arpeggio is taking the notes in a chord. Remember, we have those note sandwiches, the two pieces of bread and the piece of cheese in the middle. That's our chord. And it's playing them one at a time instead of playing them all together. All right? Um, now, one example that they have on the page is um, this very famous arpeggio by Beethoven called the Moonlight Sonata. Maybe people have heard this at some point uh, if your parents are into classical music or if you learned it like I did from Charlie Brown because Schroeder used to play it on his little piano. But <clears throat> like I said, this is a technique that has been borrowed from classical music and has come into a lot of popular music Here's an example right here. Uh, Remember the Name by Fort Myers. This is a real common technique in hip hop to have a string arpeggio come in, um, especially like at the beginning of a tune, probably first famously uh, made an example of via uh, Coolio slash Stevie Wonder, uh, Gangster's Paradise, way back in the day. Anyway, let's take a quick listen to Remember the Name. And these strings that you hear right here are an arpeggio because they are the notes of a chord, but they are being played one at a time. Okay, so you get the idea. So we're going to learn to make an arpeggio, something like that, inside of Pro Tools. It's pretty easy and it really sounds cool, okay? All right, let's do it. First thing we are going to do is open up a new Pro Tools session. And as we're doing this, I'll point out again that I am using Pro Tools 11. Um, again, if you're using an earlier version like Pro Tools 8, things will look a little bit different, but function exactly the same. And um, let's talk about some of the instruments that are really nice to do arpeggios on. Um, they're really appropriate for strings, as you just heard. It sounds great on harp. It sounds really cool on piano. Uh, classical guitar, um, lots of other instruments too. Alright, so we're going to create a blank session here. Remember that if you're not getting your startup window that looks like this, you can just go to the Pro Tools win window at the top of your menu and select File New. Okay? So make sure you create a blank session and I'm going to call the blank session first name dot last name dot arpeggio hope you're following along with me. Uh, now, I don't have an E-Drive connected, an external hard drive, but if I did, I would select that external hard drive in my folder. Okay. So here's our blank slate. Uh, let's make a couple of instruments. So I'm going to make two new tracks. <coughs> um, Command-Shift-N to get our new track. They're going to be stereo tracks, and they're going to be instrument tracks. We're going to hit Create. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to label the first one Chords. And then I can hit Next. I'm going to label the next one Arpeggio. All right. OK, um, let's put an expand on each one of these tracks. So for my multi-channel plugin, instrument, Expand to. All 
All right, and then remember our little trick, we can hold down Option and drag a copy of that expand down onto the other track. Holding down Option and dragging pretty much always makes a copy of whatever you're dragging. So <clears throat> now for my chords, um, let's see, let's put, um, oh, I don't know. You know what, I, let's, let's put one of these pads on here. Um, let's do a simple sign. Simple sign. And then on the second track, the arpeggio, let's try some strings for this, okay? So uh, let me come down to strings and I'll pick these spiccato strings up and down, okay? So strings, which is number 14, spiccato strings up and down. All right, spiccato, incidentally, which sounds really gross, either like some sort of bad sausage or something that you do when you spit on somebody. Spiccato actually means hitting the strings of uh, the violin or cello or whatever string instrument you're playing kind of aggressively and sharply. Chin. Okay. <clears throat> now, the reason that I made two tracks here is because an arpeggio as you saw in Wikipedia, is always based on chords. So the first thing I'm going to make is a chord progression here. <clears throat> uh, so, in order to do a chord progression, let's go to our MIDI editor, Control equals, and I'm going to make sure that our grid is set to eighth notes. There it is right there. And I'm going to start making a chord. Um, now, when we do this, let me also review a little bit of the circle of fifths and how we make a chord progression, okay? So zooming in just a little bit till we can see the first bar, we should see one and two. We can zoom in just maybe one more time here, and we can see one, 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 two, one, three, and one, four. So this represents the four beats of the first bar, all right? I'm here in the middle of the keyboard between three and four, um, and I'm going to make a chord. And remember, when you're picking a chord progression, the first chord doesn't really matter that much. Um, we just need to decide on major or minor. I'm going to start with D minor, okay? So I locate D, which is the dodge in the garage right there, and I make a note. And then you may remember that a minor chord is created by skipping two rows, making a note, skipping three rows, and making a note. That's always what a minor is going to look like, all right? And let's um, maybe pull that out. Actually, we'll pull, pull both of those out. And I'm going to drag copies of these into the other three beats of this bar. So there's my first bar. Okay, kind of an ethereal little sound. All right, um, so D minor, two notes on the bottom. Uh, two rows skipped on the bottom, three rows skipped on the top. All right, <clears throat> let's talk really quick about using the circle of fifths again. Um, going back to Firefox, if I do an image search for the circle of fifths, and I bring that up, and I locate my first chord, D minor, I know that the circle of fifths is going to help me pick other chords that will sound pretty good as a transition from D minor if I stay close to that chord on the circle of fifths. So from D minor, I might want to go to A minor or C or F or B minor or G minor or even E minor or G, but I wouldn't want to go all the way across the circle to E or B or something like that. Okay, so from a minor, uh, from D minor, let's say that I'm going to go to A minor, and then C, and then F, okay? Uh, or rather, D minor, A minor, F, C. That's what I'm going to go. D minor, A minor, F, C. D minor, A minor, F, C. Let's see if I can remember that. All right, going back to Pro Tools. So there was my D minor. Now I want to go to A minor. Remember, I'm still doing minor, so it's going to have the same shape, two on the bottom, three on the top. So I can grab this whole thing. I can hold down Option to drag a copy. 
and I'm just going to move this up until it starts on A. Right? Remember that we're just going alphabetically. If that's my dodge in the garage, then that's D, E, F, G, and then one more to A. Okay? So <clears throat> there's A minor. Um, then I want to go to C major. So I'm going to grab all these. And I'm going to go to C. Oopsie, sorry. Uh, control equals. And remember, this is C because here's my Dodge in the garage, the one car garage. So C is the note immediately underneath it. Um, I need to make this major. And remember, the only difference between a major and a minor chord in terms of how it looks inside of the MIDI editor is that the middle row is raised up one so that I have three on the bottom and the two on the top. Okay? So now I've got C major. Then the final chord that I wanted to do is F major. So I'm going to grab that whole chord. I'm going to hold down Option to make a copy. I'm going to drag that copy. And I'm going to bring it up until I'm on F, which is right there. OK? <clears throat> All right. So uh, let's listen to this real quick. Okay, so <clears throat> there we go, we got our chord progression. Now why did we do that? Because, here's the big takeaway, arpeggios are built from chords. All they are is taking the three notes that compose of that chord and sequencing them one after another in some kind of pattern that you pick. All right? Um, <clears throat> so let's take an example here. I'm going to click on my arpeggio for a moment, and let's just look at this first chord and try and remember it, okay? Um, the three notes that make up this chord are D, which is the bottom note, F, which is the middle note, and uh, A, which is the top note, D, F, and A, okay? So, D, F, A. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use those three notes to make some kind of staircase -y looking sort of pattern in which those notes are play being played one at a time. So I'm going to turn off my arpeggio, my chord rather, and I'm going to make my arpeggio, but I'm going to make it an octave higher so that it has its own place in the keyboard to kind of shine through the mix. All right. Now, <clears throat> my grid is an eighth notes, so this is going to be an eighth note arpeggio. I could just as easily have set the grid to sixteenth notes, or quarter notes, or even thirty-second notes, and still have an arpeggio. It would just be an arpeggio that moves faster or slower. All right, so D, F, and A. So just to remind myself of those notes, there's the D, there's the F, and there's the A. So I'm going to make these into some kind of sequence. And I'm going to start with the top note. And um, I'm also going to use the octave above the D. So uh, here's the dodge in the garage. Here's another dodge in the garage. Remember, that's still just another D, right? That's all it is. OK, so what have I done? I've made this pattern that's using the first, third, and fifth note of that chord, the bottom, middle, and top note of the chord. And I've sequenced them so that there's only one playing at a time. Notice that, only one note at a time. That's the key thing. And they go in some kind of pattern, from the fifth to the first, to the third to the first, to the first an octave higher, to the fifth to the third to the fifth. Why do they pick those? Just almost randomly. I just want to see what it sounds like. Now let's listen to it. Okay, so the only thing that I don't like is that it turns around and repeats the fifth note twice. So I'm just going to do that so that the note doesn't repeat. Sounds pretty cool, right? Okay, so 
Let's look at our chords again and just notice again that these notes in red up here are the exact same notes as the notes in blue here, just moved up an octave. And now I'm going to do the same trick that I did with the chords. I'm just going to grab this pattern and I'm going to move it to the other bars and adjust the starting note. So now my chord moves from D to A minor. So I'm going to grab all of these notes that I just made. I hold down Option. Let me select them all again. There we go. And I'm going to have them start on A instead of D. Just following the chord. Okay? Now I'm going to do it again, and I'm going to move them down to C. Like that. Okay? Now, here i got to do a little more work, right? Remember, this was A, A minor, just like this was C minor. Now I've switched to a major chord. Look, there's three spaces on the bottom, two spaces on the top. That means that my arpeggio has to be major as well. I moved it to the right starting note. Now I just have to adjust it to be major. How do I do that? Here was the third note, right? The middle note, the cheese in the sandwich. So <clears throat> all I have to do to make this major is move it up one more row, right? Now I'm still using the same three notes in red here that I am in blue, all right? And then I'm going to grab all of those. I'm going to hold down my Option key and move those one more time until they're starting on F. This is already major. I've already changed it, so I don't have to do anything else to it, okay? So just one more time, the big point, oint, 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 is that the notes in red are the exact same notes being played in the notes in blue, the notes of the chord, just one at a time in a repetitive sequence. Let's give a listen to it. Cool. And there you go. That's basically how you make an arpeggio. All right. Now, <clears throat> let's try it on your own. So here's what I'm going to ask you to do. Try coming over here, like skip some bars and maybe come over to the nine and go through the same process on, this, on the same tracks, on the exact same tracks of going back here, right? Here at bar nine, make a chord progression of your own. Make it last four bars, one chord for each bar. Um, then use those chords and those notes to build an arpeggio. If you want, you can change the instruments or you can just leave them the same. Um, but at the end, what you should wind up with is a chord progression that you made, four bars right here, and then an arpeggio that you build out of those chords down here on the bottom. Okay. Now remember, when you make your chords, it's a really good idea to be taking a look at the circle of fifths and making sure that you're picking chords from three pi wedges that are next to each other in the circle of fifths. Can I do four? Sure. Can you do five? Yeah, you can do whatever you want. These are all guidelines. But what it comes down to is that it's going to probably sound best if you stay within three pi wedges. All right? All right, guys. Enjoy and good luck.